Good evening, everybody. This is Scott Morganroth here uh, for the South Florida Tribune Broadcasting Network. And hello, everybody. Tonight, we introduce another new show called The Real and Rare. Once again, I, my name is Scott Morganroth, and my co-host is Xavier McKnight. I met Xavier last year when he was the Sports Information Director for Savannah State University. Although his team lost 77 to nothing, uh, during that game, we struck a friendship that has allowed us to become broadcasting colleagues. Tonight, we uh, begin a new era with a show that will feature sports and non-related sports subjects. So, so we'll lead off here, Xavier, with the Cubs firing of Joe Madden, along with uh, the dirtiest player in football, Vontaze Verfecht, who uh, was suspended for the rest of the season. But once again, Xavier, welcome to the big, our big show. Glad to be here, Scott. Good evening, everyone. You know, we just plan on bringing you all some real and rare content that you usually get in sports journalism or journalism at all these days. Glad to have this opportunity. Glad to be on board, Scott. Well, I am too, Xavier. We've talked about this for quite a while. And you know what? Now we get an opportunity to go out there and just do our thing. So, well, I know we've... Uh, we're going to lead off with the Cubs uh, firing of Joe Madden. It's probably in your eyes, Xavier, the worst kept secret on the planet, isn't it? Well, it definitely is because this is a move that should have happened over a year ago. The creases were already starting to crack there a little in Chicago over a year ago. You know, they still made the playoffs last year, but they were a wild card team. They didn't look like the same team at all. They didn't address any of those really big needs that they needed in the off season. They didn't do it again at the trade deadline. And what I'm talking about in particular for everyone out there is the relief pitching. And even in the year that they won the World Series in 2016, they still didn't have the best relief pitching staff then. I'll just go ahead and say it now. Let's let's go back to 2016 for a second. Now, I remember watching all seven of those World Series games. The Cleveland Indians, they, they blew it. They easily should have won the World Series that year. They were up three games to one. They had a chance in game seven. They easily blew it. But, you know, this is a, even though they said that this is a win-win trade or a win-win decision for everyone in the Cubs organization, I feel differently about it, Scott. Quite honestly, I'm, I'm disappointed that things came to this because I'm not even going to say 2016 here. 2015, when the Cubs emerged on the scene as the powerhouse team of the NL Central, they looked like a future dynasty in the making. You had Anthony Rizzo there. You had an upstart, young star, and Chris Bryant, who was there, who will go on to win the National League Most Valuable Player Award the next year. You had a lot of good components there. You had young stars like Dexter Fowler. You had great contributing players like Jason Hayward. And, you know, somehow, some way, this – we, we're now at this point. And, you know, I'm going to get on to Joe Madden for a second, but, you know, we have to talk about some other moves that the Cubs now need to make along with this one. Because this was the correct move to make, but now they need to make the other move that they should have made a year ago, too. They need to move on from Chris Bryant. Something is not clicking there. Something is not the same. I don't know if it's the environment, because I still believe in Chris Bryant as a baseball player. I still believe in him as one of the premier third basemen in the league. I still believe in him as a superstar player in the league. He's only 27 years old. I just feel like maybe he needs a change of environment. Those guys, they did what they were supposed to do in Chicago, even though, you know, the team that they had, it was like, we want to see more. We should have seen more. I was really anticipating seeing a Cubs and Yankees World Series, and I thought that it would actually happen this year. I said after the 2016 World Series, back on a radio show I did at Savannah State University, I said, within three years, the Cubs and the Yankees will play each other in the World Series. And, you know, now we're not getting that. And we're seeing a Cubs team that, the, here's the bright spot for them. They have the OFC in the front office. They have him running the show. And we saw what he did in Boston. We saw what he ultimately helped bring to Chicago. He ended the two biggest curses in, ML, in MLB history. So, obviously, this man knows what he's doing, but the Cubs have their work cut out for them. So, you know, one one's already been squared away there with Joe Madden. Chris Bryan needs to be next. And possibly maybe even a Kyle Schwarber, too. You know, I, I believe that people honestly didn't look at them 
not bringing back Dexter Fowler after winning the World Series, I think that's actually a move that's hurt them because they haven't had any stability in that position since he really left, and he was a stable player. He knew how to play his role, and, you know, things just, they're falling apart. And here's another player that they traded away, Starling Castro. I know his numbers were going down, but he was still a huge piece of that team. He showed up in the postseason for them those two years. You know, it's just it's kind of hard to tell, and it's with the game of baseball, period, anyway. Because we can say that the same thing is going on in Boston right now, even though they did the right move firing Dave Dombrowski as well. But it's just very disappointing to see that the Cubs and Joe Madden ended up coming to this point for me personally, because I honestly did believe that that was the next baseball dynasty in the making. With the young talent that they had on their team, they looked like they honestly had potential to at least challenge what the San Francisco Giants did earlier in this decade and be the closest thing that we've seen to a real baseball dynasty since the core four Yankees of the late 90s and early 2000s. Scott, I'll hand it off to you. Okay, thank you, Xavier. First of all, let me talk about a few points. I will say one thing about the Cubs' bullpen back then is when they had Araldis Chapman, you know, i got to give him credit. They certainly worked him hard before he went over to the Yankees. So, you know, you might as well get as much mileage as you can over a trade deadline move, which they were able to do. That ultimately led him to the World Series because he pitched some big innings for the Cubbies in that series. I will give you this, okay, that the Cleveland Indians definitely did choke. Just like they did many years ago when they lost to the, at that time, the Florida Marlins, the Indians simply gave it away. Period. Okay. Let's go on to Dexter Fowler for a moment. You don't take away a guy out of your clubhouse. You just don't do that and expect to think that everything's going to stay together. I think sometimes the guys in the clubhouse, Xavier, tend to get undervalued. And then when they're gone, they, you wish them when they're gone. Do you know what I mean? So, you, you know, we know what, and let alone to lose them to the Cardinals of all teams. I mean, you're going to see this guy 18, 19 times a year. And don't tell me this guy didn't have a chip on the shoulder every time he played against the Cubbies because we know full well that he did. As far as uh, Joe Madden, you know, he will always go down in Cubs lore as the guy that did break the curse. He really did. But I think that Theo Epstein should be account held accountable for some of those moves that he let get away that caused Madden to deal with this, you know, lesser hand than he had. Although I got well, it. I that. Yeah, I, and I think that the one thing I can honestly say is that Theo Epstein is going to the Baseball Hall of Fame and the Builders Division when the time comes. And I do think that Madden's going to end up there too because you can't, can't forget that he took the Tampa Bay Rays to the World Series only to lose for the Philadelphia Philly. So, you know, they both have Hall of Fame credentials. And let's not kid ourselves. Joe Madden will not be unemployed long. He won't. And you know why? Uh, because of the fact that the LA Angels let go Brad Ausmus after one year. And Madden um, played a big role in the Angels winning a World Series uh, under Mike Sosha. And he's been with that organization for 30 years and still has a home in Anaheim. So, Joe Madden just needs a change of scenery. The Cubs, I, I, I really don't know what to think of them. Now, you made another interesting point, which I really th find interesting. Cool. Okay, first of all, if the Cubs and the Yankees had played in the World Series, the only thing I would say is, is you would have ratings up to Wazoo, and they could fill a 100,000-seat stadium with those two teams. Don't you agree? Well, I definitely agree with that, and that was one of the reasons I was really pushing very hard for it. You know, even though we had L.A. and Boston in the World Series last year, I wasn't very excited for that. I understand that those are two big market teams, but the series was lopsided for a reason. The Boston Red Sox were on another level next year. They were playing baseball on a higher level than anyone else in that season last year. I want everyone to keep this in mind. The opponent who they played in the ALCS, the Houston Astros, they dominated them. The Houston Astros, to me, may have been the second all-around best team in baseball last year. 
This year, of course, they look like the best all around team. But, you know, that just goes to show you how dominant that Boston team was. But, you know, sticking on subject here to Chicago and the Yankees, I absolutely agree that would have been a fireworks show. If they would have filled the stadiums up to mass capacity. People probably would have been watching from the outside of the stadium because they wouldn't have been able to actually get into the stadiums themselves. And I believe it would have been the huge ratings boost that baseball would have needed. Because, you know, let's just go back a couple of years before all of this, Scott. We had the Kansas City Royals in the World Series in 2014 and 2015. But the ratings weren't necessarily exactly that high. They weren't necessarily where baseball thought they would have been. And the Royals, for that two-year stretch, they were basically America's team. Because they came out of nowhere. No one expected them to be that good. And I definitely didn't expect them to win a World Series. But I also knew that it wasn't going to last long. They're not a blue blood cornerstone franchise. They're in the smallest market in baseball. And, you know, there, there was their 15 minutes of fame. And I don't want to downgrade that World Series accomplishment like it was nothing, but it seriously was just a 15 minutes of fame because look where the Kansas City Royals are today. So, you know, the Cubs and the Yankees, the Dodgers, the Astros, I was really excited when all of those teams started winning again. I definitely thought the Cubs were going to take the next step. But, of course, the biggest move that they made mistakes on was that bullpen. And, Scott, you brought up the point that, yes, they did have a raw as Chapman in that bullpen. But let me add to that for a second. I want everyone to realize this about a raw as Chapman in 2016. Do people actually realize that in that offseason, he was traded to the New York Yankees and he kind of forced his way out of New York just momentarily because the Yankees were grossly underachieving. They weren't even a playoff-bound team because they tried to bring back that same brittle roster of veteran-laden players like Mark Teixeira and Alex Rodriguez and others from 2015 who surprised everybody and went on that tear that they did. But in 2016, of course, they weren't even a playoff team because they had all of those older players in there. And honestly, we didn't really know where that franchise was headed. So he forced his way out of there. And then as soon as they released those older players, A-Rod simultaneously retired, Mark Teixeira walked away, Harold Chapman, you know, we all started to see that young talent that was coming into New York. It started off with Gary Sanchez. You know, Greg Bird was another guy, and I'm honestly disappointed with that as well because I thought he had a chance to be the next phase of the Yankees. But injuries have just absolutely robbed him of even coming close to have that opportunity. And guys like Aaron Judge have completely stepped up to the plate, and even though he's been injury riddled as well, the guy's just been sensational. Think about this. Aaron Judge missed a huge chunk of this season and still found a way to blast over 25 home runs. That's just sensational right there in one itself. But a raw this Chapman, he ultimately got his World Series and he went right back to the New York Yankees. And they didn't really try to build off of that because when you go back off of that, Scott, it's like you said, they worked a raw this Chapman in that World Series and that postseason alone because they didn't have anyone else in that bullpen that they trusted. And when they lost the raw this Chapman, they didn't really try to replace him in the best possible way that they could, in my opinion. And here's one thing about a bullpen. You don't try to build everything around one guy. You have to try to go out and get multiple relievers that can go out there and do it for at least one inning, maybe even two innings, guys that you know you can rely on to not necessarily give up runs and continue to secure the game. Because the offense was there. The offense was there in 2017, and it was there to a degree in 2018. It really dipped away this year that we saw when this team completely just fell apart and they fell off the rails and they lost nine games straight in September at one point. The offense just wasn't there anymore. They didn't have the pitching to pick them up. And, you know, we'll speak on that starting pitching in just a minute, too, because POF Scene and Company, they made mistakes there as well. Yeah, they did. There's no question about it. Uh, let's, let's talk about our philosophies from a reliever standpoint, though. Because we were brought up in different eras. Okay, number one, I come from an era where uh, you had the two to three inning save. I can think of a lot of guys that perfected in it. Some of the ones that stand out are Rich Gossage and Raleigh Fingers. And I think.